What do you think? Should we force social media users to show their name, their name, image, and likeness? Or should we continue to allow the online trolls to be alive and well? I ask this because it has become a topic of conversation this week in the presidential primary, believe it or not. So uh, first off, I saw the story and I thought to myself, yeah, yeah, uh, don't let the trolls exist. Don't let them be nameless, faceless people. But then after the emotional side of me calmed down, I said to myself, no, we've got to allow the trolls to live on. And let me explain, after I play for you what sparked this whole conversation, and this came from Nikki Haley on Fox News with our good friend Harris Faulkner when she was talking about social media and how she believes everybody on social media should be required to basically be verified as a real person. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts, social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's, first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden people have to stand by what they say and it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're gonna get some civility when people know their name is next to what they say. Accountability. And they know their pastor and their family member is going to see it. It's going to help our kids and it's going to help our country. In a perfect world, Nikki Haley is right. We don't live in a perfect world. We live in a world where a lot of people are on social media, not under their real names. And I know this for a fact because they don't want their bosses knowing how they view the world. And I don't mean that because they're like radical, crazy people. I mean, because, you know, they might be right of center folks. And they don't want their boss, their colleagues looking them up. Whoa, look at who this person. Whoa, they follow some real radicals out there like Ron DeSantis or, you know, I'm making things up, but you get the point. Dana White. Oh, my goodness. So they don't use their real names on social media. There are a lot of people like that. So when I first heard Nikki Haley say this, and I say this as someone who is, you know, on the receiving end of a lot of trolls, I'm like, oh, this is a great idea because I I get so fed up with the trolls who don't have their names on their accounts, who always want to just rip on me and comment Facebook. Well, not less Facebook, but more Twitter because that place is just a cesspool. Um, So my first thought was, yeah, that'd be great because I guarantee you. It's so funny how the toughest actors on social media are people who don't have their names or pictures on there. That's always how it works. It's like, Steve, one, two, three, nine, five, six, eight, four, with a picture of a flower (laughs) or something weird like that. So that was my first thought. But then I'm like, wait, no, no, no. We can't have this from the government. I don't want the government going out there and, and making sure I'm verified on social media. And Ron DeSantis fired back on this, too. Here's what Ron DeSantis said. Ron DeSantis responded to Nikki Haley. He said, you know who were anonymous writers back in the day? Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, and James Madison when they wrote the Federalist Papers. They were not national security threats, nor are the many conservative Americans across the country who exercise their constitutional right to voice their opinions without fear of being harassed or canceled by the school they go to or the company they work for. Haley's proposal to ban anonymous speech online, similar to what China recently did, is dangerous and unconstitutional. It will be dead on arrival in my administration. That is from Ron DeSantis. Now, I can promise you this. A lot of the trolls who are nameless on social media are not the next Alexander Hamilton. Talk about a bombshell. I will say that much. But I get Ron DeSantis' point that he's making here, John, and that is it is a very dangerous road to be going down. I'm kind of with you. I mean, I understand the whole driver's license or license plates on your car concept. In order to operate something, you need to be registered and all. But whether the person i see plenty of people that are willing to put their name on some of the silly stuff so my point is the thought gets out there anyway right the message is the message. out there 
whether it's a bot or whether it's a person, you know, maybe that what you need to do is learn the bias of the sources you're reading. That way you can sort out what is uh, you know, this notion of misinformation is kind of silly. It's like just learn your sources bias. You can judge Pete by what he says or we know what Quentin Lucas might say in a certain situation, right? Yeah, but I mean, I think this is more about people being afraid to post anything and share what they believe in. That's what this is about. For a lot of users, I would imagine. I got you. You don't think so? Well, I was kind of going down the concept of misinformation and silly stuff that oh, goes out okay. there and, and bots, you know. Yeah, that's a different the, tangent. Chain, that's a different okay. tangent. Yeah, this is about tangent than you. whether or not people feel safe sharing their opinions on social media. And there's a lot of people, and you can call us up at 913-408-7957, yeah. who are going to say, I, I can't share what I believe on social media because I'm afraid of my boss, Right. I, I don't want my boss to see it because I don't know if that's going to hurt me in the workplace. So I've got to make up a Twitter name where then I can go share my opinions. Or is the coercion of you, you know, maybe you're not so much afraid to state your opinion. You're afraid of the retribution of it, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Is no, so yeah, you're, you're afraid of, yeah. of your boss, yeah. basically. Sure, retribution Saying, for your opinion. Yeah, I don't like, you know, what, what Johnny believes in cubicle number seven. So, uh, you know, he's going to get a demotion or, you know, if we get to the chopping mm-hmm. block, he's going to be the first to go. Yep. And I understand that fear in this political environment right like, now. Like when I post a photo of me in the Bud Light aisle. At, yeah. At Hy-Vee, I can <laughs> feel fear of retribution. Yeah, you, you would get fired if you buy a 30-pack of Bud Light there, Mark. Yeah, there that you got to be careful. That is very true. I will fire you yesterday if you buy Bud Light. <laughs> So you're right. You're thinking um, along the lines of how you should be thinking there, Mark. there. Yeah. So, listen, I think that there's a lot of you out there who feel that way. There's a lot of you that I, you know, will occasionally interact with on social media who feel that way. Uh, but I also get a lot from the other side as well who are just, you know, big mouths and also mm-hmm. don't have any pictures or names mm-hmm. or anything like that yeah. attached to their social media. And, you know, I, I, I can always tell right away, too, if it's somebody who is anonymous because they are fearful of their beliefs being known by others that they may work with or associate with, or if it's because they're just a total jerk, for lack of a better word that I can't say on the radio, that's FCC compliant, (laughs) uh, and they want to troll people all day, every day. Those people are the worst. Mm -hmm. But I will say you kind of just have to roll with it. I used to let it bother me more than I do now, but I've got this new approach that I received from somebody, and I thought it was a good approach. If it's not going to impact you five years from now, don't waste five minutes on it today. Great and I am, yeah. I am done letting any online troll bother me. I rarely respond to them. Even people who put their names on things, I rarely respond to them because if it's not going to have an impact on my life five years from now, I'm not going to spend five minutes on it today. Think about it. Social media is what you make it. Yes. Right? And I love so that I've, line. I've dwindled all my stuff down. I don't put up anything. If they listen to the show and want to talk to me about it, great. Mm-hmm. But I don't post anything one way or the other. Mine's all hobby crap and family stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. It's what I make it. You know? Yeah. It's what you want, if you want it to be. you want to see what be. I had for dinner, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see his disgusting filet of fish <laughs> find it on John Anthony's social media pages. <laughs> Which may lead us to the topic you had down here earlier about life expectancy for men tanking. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I contributed with my... <laughs> I bypass surgery and uh, you're going and, the wrong direction yeah, man yeah, I'm, I'm bringing the whole average uh, down <laughs> one filet of fish at a time 913-408-7957 913-408-7957 i do you know if you can make the argument on the other side though i'm curious to hear it because nikki haley's going down this road she's a republican and a lot of you know folks in her own party are like nikki what are you doing And now on the political side, you've got this tit for tat between Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis because they're both vying for that number two spot. They're vying for like the the non-Trump side of the party right now. So it's been an interesting tit for tat. But to me, the more interesting part is social media and how, if at all, it should be regulated by the government. 913-408-7957 to join us here on KCMO Talk Radio 95.7 FM. Well, Nikki Haley sparking an interesting conversation this week when the uh, former South Carolina governor and now presidential hopeful says that uh, she wants everyone on social media to be under their real names and to be verified. 
No ifs, ands, or buts. And as she puts it, that will cut down on the bots from China, uh, from Russia, uh, pushing propaganda, things of that nature. But there's been a pushback from her right side of the aisle. Ron DeSantis noting that, uh, hey, well, hold on, hold on one second here, Nikki. Because when you look at anonymous writers back in the day, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, and James Madison were those when they wrote the Federalist Papers. Now, that is true, and I would argue 99.9% of social media trolls are not the next Alexander Hamilton. But uh, still, he, he makes an interesting point. It's a treacherous road to go down when you start talking about the government requiring you to have your name on everything on social media because there's reasons people don't do that. 913-408-7957. Join us 920 on a busy and beautiful Wednesday morning, by the way. Let's go to Jay. He's in uh, Lee's Summit. What's up, Jay? You're not the next John Jay now, are you? No, I'm not the next John Jay, but you guys sound excellent on your uh, new FM uh, 95.7, you, John, and Mark. Um, That's and very I'm nice. Yeah, I, we appreciate that. Such a nice man. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir on some of this, but with social media, you know, with everything with doxing and with also people letting things know that go on with work, which may be illegal or whistleblowers. And then there's also people who just have boundaries in their life. They keep friends family, work, they keep them compartmentalized because the same reason work doesn't want your family coming into work and creating drama. You don't want work coming into family. And with online trolls, um, I've had to tell this to other people who get upset. And it's like, sometimes you have to consider the source. Some points, if they're a good point, you don't need to know who it's from. It stands on its own. Other times, like if it's a Raider fan that hates you, consider the source. A Raider <laughs> fan hating you, that can be a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good point there, Jay. So you got to consider the source when you're getting trolled online and let it kind of roll off your shoulder. Logic and critical thinking. You should filter everything that comes in. Some people are better at filtering than others. And we've, we're, we're all humans. We can all get initially upset. The lizard brain goes off and it takes the wizard brain or the, you know, the angel wings on the other shoulder to kind of rein you back in. Um, but sometimes, you know, even when a troll says something, even if it's a lot of filth, sometimes you can pick out like a little nugget of wisdom. Like, eh, maybe they had one point. Ninety nine percent of it is silver and black. But that red and gold nugget. Yeah, I'm OK with that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good analogy there, Jay. It's a good way to put it. Consider the source with all this stuff. Well done. Nine one three four zero eight seven ninety five seven on the uh, text line. Pete, that guy Jay is smart. He may not be the next John Jay, but he's got something smart to say. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a good point. Also on the text line, Pete, I was a teacher. Every time a survey or whatever was taken, I put strong comments and my name on it. If they want my opinion, come talk to me. It's called chicken otherwise. Now, I get it, but to compare a survey that you are given by your employer where they're looking for your feedback... That is a different concept than you setting up a Twitter account or a Facebook account or whatever and expressing your political beliefs, your worldviews on it and having fear of retribution or retaliation or whatever you want to say. That is different than you being asked, hey, what's your opinion on the workplace, <laughs> right? Because you're, you know, you, the anonymous surveys, you never know if they're anonymous in corporate America. John's yeah, got some thoughts right? on that. You, know, <laughs> you suddenly you get to the mess. Hey, you haven't uh, filled out your anonymous survey. Yeah. Wait. Oh, how, how do you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, there is that 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 part of the uh, equation there mm -hmm. on this that needs to be considered. But I don't think that's an apples to apples on the text line. With all due respect, to say, hey, I get asked for my opinion on the workplace, and I give it, and I put my name on it proudly. That's different. Than someone saying, hey, I want to have a social media profile and a social media presence. However, I realize there are some downfalls here if the wrong person sees my stuff. Now, you know who I think of, by the way? Uh, a viral social media account, Libs of TikTok. Remember that thing came to prominence two years ago where this lady, she's a, yeah. a young lady from Kentucky. Interest, and, and this is why, you know, many progressives can't stand her. She's a young 
minority female from Kentucky who started this TikTok account and then Twitter and then Instagram account called Libs of TikTok. And all she would do is take these crazy videos from some ultra progressive people and reshare them on like Twitter and other platforms because a lot of us don't bother with TikTok because, you know, it's funded and owned essentially by the Chinese Communist Party. That's all she did. Share the crazy on TikTok to other platforms. Well, she got doxxed by media. Washington Post and some others are like, who is this lady lives of or who is this person lives of TikTok? And they were hoping it was some mountain man in northern Idaho who was like, you know, 82 years old who just figured out how to use his social media pages. Well, it turned out it was a young minority mother from Kentucky. And I'm blanking on her name right now, but she had a you know minority name too, Chabra or Chapra or so- something along those lines. I'd have to pull it up. But anyway, I, you know, she was doxxed. And she noted that the reason that she never wanted her name out there is because one, she knew that she was going to be a target for people if they found out who she was. And two, she knew there would be a lot of hate coming her way once people found out who she was. Shia Reichick. Shia Reichick. That's right. And if, you know, you look her up, she's a young female minority woman. Well, I guess I did that twice. Young female minority woman. Uh, you can't confirm the gender too many times these days. <laughs> I'll make that very clear. So, yes, she is a woman. But she got completely uh, uh, manhandled by many in media. And now she's kind of proud of who she is, and she has her own accounts, and you can follow her. But there was a time there it was pretty dicey. She had random people knocking on her door because she's got this huge social media following. So I understand, and I'm sympathetic to why people want to keep this stuff private in this environment. And I feel like Nikki Haley is coming from a good place in trying to eliminate the Internet trolls and the bots from China and Russia. But there still is. I'm not, you know, some expert on social media algorithms or setting up accounts. But there's got to be a way to continue to eliminate bots on social media. I mean, these social media companies, they know where you are at all given points in time with geofencing and geotracking. You're telling me they can't do a better job with the bots? I thought I think I was hit this morning by a Chinese bot, by the way. I got some guy with a or something with a social it's a it's an emoji as a face. And the Twitter handle is three cents plus. And all it says here, I think President Xi visit is in. And then it says Kong Kong Dong Dong. I don't think that's a real person. I think President Xi visit is in Kong Kong Dong Dong. I, I think that is a bot, and I think Elon Musk must do something about it, John. Had you uh, authored that, then they would accuse you of being, what, a racist for doing that last part. You know, yeah, right? you're probably right. The irony.